Welcome to project two. Project one, holding up well, hasn't fallen apart yet, so I'm pretty chuffed with that. A serviceable, if somewhat ugly and dismayed pegboard, going to be handy for this particular project. So one of my number one whinges as far is not being able to route properly. If you saw my first videos and how slightly, well, dodgy, a setup I did for the router table that I was using, now we're going to improve on that. But I didn't just want to build a router table. I have no bench tools. I have no space for bench tools. I do have the Ryobi Island Bench. I also do not have a saw horse, but why do you really need one? Nice bit of the end of the bed, and another block under there is going to support my first cut. This here is a piece of MDF, 1200 by 900. I'm going to split that straight down the guts to give me 900 by 600 times two. And I'm going to be sandwiching those together to make an additional bench top for the Ryobi table. Now, very simple in theory, I've got all my sketches done on one page, except for the fence, that's page two. This piece glued on top of this piece, a hole all the way through here, a slightly smaller hole through here, and then out of another piece of wood, I'm going to cut removable insets. I'm going to have a blank inset, so I can just use it as a table. But then the main one I want is a router inset. I'm going to have the router with the plunge base on there, take off the manufacturer's place, and effectively screw it to another piece of wood as an inset, which will, much more safely than my previous attempt, have that router operating as a router table. I also mentioned I'm going to build a fence for it, and then there's going to be another one or two little ideas, which if this works, I'm going to apply to the table as well. So this will become not just a blank table or a router table, but also a few other surprises down the track. But first things first, let's get the actual table built and then try and make the inset for the router. Apologies for all the background noise today. I've had to have the door shut because it's been raining really heavily and some inconsiderate bastard was doing the leaf blowing in the rain. How dare someone be using loud power tools while I'm trying to make a video about using loud power tools. Ugh, people these days. Anyway, videoing yourself, apart from being self-indulgent, is also really handy. When I was making that cross cut, I could see exactly where and how much dust that MDF board was cutting up. And uh, I'm glad I had that dust mask on, that's quite a good particle filter on it. So protecting myself there, and I think I may even invest in the dust extractor for the circular saw. When you're working with the garage door down, you saw quite clearly, or unclearly as the case may be, just how much uh, airborne particles you can get. Do you notice that I'm a chemist and work in sort of chemically type environments where air pollution and stuff are a consideration? However, this is another very important consideration. Now, not the ideal way of building a router table, obviously, but the method I'm choosing to use relies on that router fitting in that table. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that we can actually lower it far enough to have it a nice, flat, even surface to route on. So let's take a look at that. I've got the plunge base on here, which is the one I'm going to be using when I have the router mounted in the table. And the most important thing I need to avoid is a little metal bar right in the middle, uh, which is going to cause me problems potentially. So obviously center is where I need to be. I've got the battery on, which is important. And yep, I'm just safe by the looks of that. This will actually be my first time using my new jigsaw in a project. So just did a little bit of uh, mucking around. Might see more of that later. We'll call that practice. So it's going to drill a hole and then hope I can use this to cut in a straight line. I don't know if I'm not using these right. My Forstner bits are really crap or there's just something else I'm missing, but I never seem to be able to get them to cut like as cleanly as I see them on YouTube. Or maybe people just really heavily edit. Yeah, that's completely bugging. No wonder that's not going through. Little white's actually quite handy for seeing the pencil on the MDF, but geez, it's given me some trouble. So little switch went off in the back of my mind and reminded me that I needed to put four holes in because trying to turn corners, yeah, that ain't gonna happen, is it? So let's go overkill. Plunge router. Got a hole. 
ain't too pretty, nothing I do ever is, but well, I'll call that a uh, learning experience on the jigsaw. Luckily, no one's going to see this one, so as long as the router fits through, it's done good. So I roughly traced out the hole that's going to be smaller down the bottom. Now this is a top board and I want it to look prettier. I want this to be nice and straight. So again, the size actually here doesn't really matter as long as the hole is bigger than the hole down the bottom. And I want it to be bigger by about a centimetre and a half, maybe two centimetres. So squared off this box, square another box around the outside of it, and then be much more careful with the jigsaw this time. Now you know why I did the bottom one first. Well, here's a bit of plywood 12mm, which is funnily enough, exactly the same depth as the MDF that I'm going to be using to make my inserts. So you've got enough plywood to make a few different inserts here, a couple of blanks, the router one and the special ones, maybe a bit later on. And it's given me the answer as to how wide I want this uh, rabbit to be. So obviously I don't need to cut a rabbit per se, because I've got the two bits being glued together. But if we measure that up, this is a smaller hole that I've traced out already. The bigger hole, that's giving me two on that side. And if I've measured this right from previously, about two on that side. So remember, I can't make this any bigger, so I have to be conservative with cutting the hole in the top bit. So we'll probably go 15 mil uh, away from here to begin with, and then we can trim this down slightly to fit nice and snug because it has to be a tight fit. I want no gap around the bench top to my insets. So we learned a few things there. Firstly, my jigsaw skills need a lot of improvement which is why I'm glad I went super conservative and I only cut that a centimetre bigger than I needed to. So I still have 10 mil of play to the size of the plywood board. And the reason I did that is because I'm actually going to use the router. I remember vaguely watching a couple of these jigs where I've been set up to make a router table just like this. And we're going to put some barriers around here, get the trimming bit onto the router and use that to get a much, much more accurate cut than what I can do with the jigsaw. The second thing is that four holes, didn't need those. Two holes, James, that's all that's needed. Well now, that was an awful lot of measuring. So I didn't take it off this dodgily cut jigsaw line, obviously. Uh, fortunately, because I cut on the inside of the line, which wasn't on purpose, I'll take credit for that. I could still see my original mark, and then I could take the five mil that I want to trim off with the router, switch to the trim base, just a nice little straight bit on there, which should be able to take off this five mil quite easily. To do it accurately, I've then measured from the edge of my trim to the edge of the blade, that's exactly 40 millimeters. So then I've marked a 40 millimeter box all the way around the outside of the hole, which then this edge will ride along. So here's the fence that I've set up. Uh, I could only figure out how to do it on three sides, which is okay because it means that little dodgy straight bit there uh, on the circular trim base, I can keep towards me and I'll do the three sides and I'll just flip it around a bit and do the last side. I do like working with MDF from the point that getting shapes out of it is pretty straightforward. I've got a few ideas for some toys I want to make of my nieces and nephews coming up. Shh, secret Christmas stuff. Uh, and I think I will be using MDF just for its malleability. The real problem is that dust. You saw I ran into trouble with my fence because it actually blocked the dust extraction port, I should say on the router, so I couldn't have the vacuum there. I had to detach it, and then without the vacuum on, routing MDF is just an absolute sandstorm. Um, so do make sure you've got a really good filter mask on uh, if you're gonna do that. It's so soft though that you can really get some nice shapes out of it. I mean, look at that. That's beautiful. That's gonna be the top of my table. So now we can do a little party trick with the bottom. Thank God I can reattach 
the vacuum for this last little bit of routing. So that's called a flush trim bit. And the slight difference between it and the straight bit is that little ball bearing on top. So what it's gonna do is spin freely. Fortunately, the bit is exactly the right height I need to get down here. So I flip this upside down. The bottom is my really nice clean edge. This top is the raggedy edge. Now obviously I can't do all of it at once. I can only do one corner. But that ball bearing is gonna run along the bottom edge here and it's gonna clean up all of this rubbish edging and just make it look a little bit prettier. Well, as usual, that was an awful lot of effort to cut essentially two holes, but at least now they're pretty nice looking holes and they are exactly the right size. I'm glad I played it conservative on those cuts, even when I was being conservative with the routing, just with a little bit of sanding to get them down and everything else involved. It has ended up exactly about 15 mil. So when I was aiming for two, I've lost about half a mil, uh, sorry, half a centimeter off there just through, you know, slight errors and so on. But it is, it's perfect. It's exactly what I needed it to be. And the last thing we're gonna to do today is glue it up. So another quick tip for a glue brush. Kmart, buck 50, silicon brush. Used for basting usually, but if you trim it off like that, you get a really nice glue brush. Even when it dries, the PVA glue won't stick to it. You can just peel it straight off. And then let you cover even really large surfaces like this pretty easy. However, we've got to stop talking and move faster. Get these all clamped up. Bugger. Out of clamps. I don't know. 